cold. And tomorrow I get to install my heater. I got a bison heater. This is what it looks like. This is the mounting plate. All of this is the harness. And it goes in here. This little part comes off. And it gets plugged in here. And then this little part gets put back on. You have to make sure it clicks in place. This is the exhaust pipe. This is the air duct. This is the fuel pump wire. And that is going to get clicked on here. Mine came with that installed, but you have to install that if it didn't come with that. This rubber piece, it goes here. This is the air intake pipe. This is the tank to pump. So this is going to attach to this. This is the only thing you have to buy. And this is a doorman. I got the 5 16th size. This is the pump to the heater. These are how you attach it. You put these the tube inside the little rubber pieces and then tighten it with clamps. This is the fuel pump. This is just a bag of hardware. I already hooked this up. This is the temperature gauge. It goes onto these two. I called the company and this is nothing. You don't do anything with that. It's pretty much self-explanatory how they get connected because you've got a male and a female part so this is the air diffuser and that is everything here is my heater the first thing we did was remove the seat you have to disconnect the airbags it's the orange the yellow and then there's a little black one behind the orange and yellow just unsnap them and uh, sit them aside the yellow wires indicate that it's part of the airbag. Uh, the other color wires are for other things. You remove these two bolts and then it slides out from, from right here. Then you have a nice open space to work. We did have to remove that black thing which held the box of jack equipment in place. Next, we determine placement. As you can see, I placed it towards the driver's seat. I wanted that because I just wanted the air flowing in that direction, but there's a heat shield underneath and in order to avoid the heat shield, you wanna go as far towards the driver's seat as you can and you there's a, a bundle of wires that you have to avoid in terms of going too far forward. So as you cut into the floor, pay attention to, you know, locate those wires before you start cutting. We drilled a pilot hole from underneath. We also removed the heat shield. So it made it a whole lot easier to actually do the installation, but reattaching the heat screen was not easy. I could not have done it on my own. As you can see, there's a bar here and if you have the heater just flush to the floor, uh, the, it interferes with the bar. So we raised ours. Now we raised it in a really fancy way using, um, my friend Dennis made like this metal box. And that connected directly into the middle of the floor. We drilled a pilot hole from underneath and then once above we were able to see where that landed and we placed the hole saw, a four inch hole saw, in a position of exactly where we wanted the uh, heater to drop down. Now we're preparing to put the heater in under the van. Before we attached the heater to this mounting box, we attached the exhaust pipe and the, the fuel lines then we bolted the heater to this box. We put the box in the place where it's going to sit and mark the holes where the bolts would go. And then we drilled those holes in the bottom of the van. The next step is to put sealant. Before we did that, we tested to make sure that we had the correct spacing for the bolts because 
once you have that sealant on in the box there, if th things don't line up, you're going to have to take it, pull it up and have sealant everywhere. So we put the box on, dropped the bolts in the holes. Everything was perfect. We lifted it out, applied the sealant, put it in place. It was really hard to find the holes. We used little pin, a straight pin to locate them. And once you got a couple, it was pretty easy. Then we bolted it down with the extra sealant. We just sort of spread it around to make sure that the bolts had sealant and there was sealant along all the edges. Next is all the under the van stuff. That is the rubber bracket that's going to hold the fuel pump. The fuel pump then gets slipped into that sleeve and it needs to be at a very specific angle of 15 to 35 degrees pointing up. Next, we're installing the tube that goes from the heater to the pump. And on that line between those two elements, we have a mini filter and that filter is a little gray piece of plastic. It has an arrow on it and the arrow needs to point towards the heater. It gets placed between two of these rubber connectors. There's a whole lot of extra wire that goes from the van, the electrical part that goes from the van to the fuel pump. And we uh, sort of wound that up neatly and zip tied it to the van. The blue wire there is the fuel line. It's going from the gas tank of the van to the fuel pump. And you can see we're also zip tying that up. All right. This right here is where the doorman went. I'm not gonna take it apart, but there's a little tiny fitting you lift up, then you snap the doorman down this is a piece that we ordered from Webesto because you need 3 8 inch here and you need 3 16 inch here. Um, you can also do it with like separate connectors, but this piece, it's so nice. It's just one right angle straight back. So it's very clean. And this is the gas line and this smells like gas. Next, we returned the heat shield. This was a bitch. I could not have done it by myself. I don't think it can be done easily by one person. Um, finagling it into place so that the, the bolt holes line up and then uh, reattaching it was, was really difficult. Positioning the air intake and the exhaust pipe. It wants to go down, aiming slightly back and aiming slightly out. Uh, they're not really long, so you don't really have a lot of distance to do that. Once they're in the right position and you found a place to connect them, they just get screwed into the van. That's the entire install. Next is the electrical. The harness is about 12 feet long, and that was like perfect for me to go from under the seat. I carved out some of the insulation by the slider door and ran it through there and then up into the furniture and back to the battery bank. I wanted to go to the distribution panel and connect it that way, but uh, there wasn't enough wire and connecting more wire could make there be a voltage shortage. So I connected it straight to the batteries. The rings, ring lugs were not big enough. They're like a quarter inch. My battery needed three eighths of an inch. So I went to AutoZone, bought three eighths inch rings that attached to like 10 to 12 wire. This wire, I'm pretty sure it was 12. I measured it. They told me 10 if I, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> he shrunk it, stripped it, all that kind of stuff. And it worked perfectly. <sighs> this is how you turn the heater on. You press this little button. It lights up. Okay, see that little flickering flame in the upper left-hand corner of the screen? That indicates the heater. What you want to do is press OK. Now you can see that it stopped flickering and it filled in at the bottom of the screen. Can you hear it? It's working! <laughs> Apparently it takes a few minutes to like get hot. Like right now it's just blowing cool air, but it does get hot. And that is my entire installation. Thank you for watching.